Just two weeks ago, Republicans were condemning Donald Trump after the deadly attack on the U.S. Capitol. Now some already appear to be softening their stance, rolling it back. The latest example, House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy. He met with the former president at his Florida resort yesterday. It's a turnaround for McCarthy, who is backing off his previous statement that Trump, quote, bared responsibility for the siege. United and ready to win in 22, McCarthy tweeted after the meeting. Both he and Trump issued statements outlining their pledge to work together to help Republicans win back control of the House and Senate in 2022. So for more, let's bring in Bloomberg's Anna Edgerton. You know her, you love her. We're bringing her back in. <laughs> Anna, what can you tell us about this meeting between McCarthy and Trump? Well, this is a function of one thing, and that's the fact that Republican voters still love the former president. So, you know, I'm sure most elected officials would be happy to move on and go back to their simple life of, you know, talking about tax policy and, you know, conservative values. But Republican voters remain deeply loyal to the former president. So it's really hard for people like Kevin McCarthy to move on from his influence. Let's talk about that split there, the civil war, so to speak, happening within the Republican Party. You've got this faction of Republicans who are still deeply devoted to uh, the former president, Donald Trump. But there are others who vehemently oppose and want to distance themselves. How are Republicans trying to position Donald Trump for the future of the Republican Party? Are they trying to create a role for him? Yeah, one of the most prominent Trump critics that you hear in the Republican Party is uh, House Republican Adam Kinzinger. He's a representative from Illinois, and he has said that the party absolutely needs to move on. And he's really condemned Trump's comments that kind of led up to the January 6th riot, especially regarding the election. On the other hand, you know, you have 139, I believe, of his colleagues who voted to question the election results, even after the January 6th riot. So, Part of that comes from what they're hearing from the constituents. You know, they're hearing back home, we really want you to contest this election that we think was fraudulent, which, of course, is not true. So that puts most of the Republican Party in a really difficult place. It does put them in a difficult place. Uh, most notably, RNC Republican National Committee Chairwoman Rona McDaniel, who talked to the Associated Press about how she really wants to see Trump through uh, help help win back majorities in 2022. Um, and it puts the others in a tough spot too. But I want to find out what you mean or what you think about the fiercely loyal Trump supporters. Has there been any chatter, any more chatter about the future of the Republican Party in general and whether or not they plan on bridging this gap that's happened? Well, one thing to keep an eye on is the threat that Trump and his supporters could break off into a third party. You know, there was talk of like a MAGA party or a Patriot party, which, of course, would be devastating for Republicans. You know, that would take a lot of their voters and kind of leave them in this uh, awkward place, kind of, you know, a party of what what used to be because the Republican Republican Party now really is the party of Trump. So, you know, that's a threat that continues to stand over the GOP. And while that's active, they kind of have to you know, consider what Trump wants and consider what his allies want. You know, he has a lot of allies still, especially in local Republican parties. So it's hard for Republicans in Washington to start moving past that. It must be. And so something else pretty interesting happening with McCarthy there is um, his ongoing with Marjorie Tyler Greene, who Taylor Greene, pardon me, and the calls to remove her from her House committee seat um, after her post of comments that were dismissive of school shooting victims. Um, and so this is a standalone story, I should say, separate story. What more have you heard about that and its effect on the Republican party right now? Yeah, Marjorie Taylor Greene is a kind of a, an interesting question for Trump because he, for, excuse me, for McCarthy, because he has to, you know, include her as one of his Republican freshmen. But, you know, he uh, he has to deal with some of the comments that she's made in the past. You know, like you mentioned, school shooting. She's also kind of spoken positively about the QAnon conspiracy theory, mm. although she later tried to distance herself from that. And I was digging through some of McCarthy's comments yesterday, and he had said in August there was no 
place in the Republican Party for QAnon. He voted in favor of a resolution on the House floor last year Mm -hmm. uh, rejecting QAnon and saying there was no place for that. But he has included this representative who has said that she's an adherent to this conspiracy theory in, Hmm. uh, in the Republican Party and given her committee assignments. All right. Well, Bloomberg's Anna Edgerton, thank you for that update and thank you for joining us.